uh, and you're, we're going to do a minute a speaker, given the fact that we have so many speakers, and I want to make sure we get to every single speaker. Uh, uh, my name is Sharif Elgamal, and I am here as a resource regarding the landmarks issue in respect to 45 Park Place. Thank you very much. Conservatives from across the country who do not live in this great and diverse city have spoken against this project in the name of American nationalism. Yet it is utterly hypocritical of their otherwise limited government stance to tell a private landlord what to do with his property is absurd. The irony of their intolerance is stinging. If it was a church being if it was a church being built and people were trying to prevent its construction, though these same conservatives would be calling it a socialist takeover from an overreaching government. Yeah. To the world, this country stands as a beacon of freedom even with our litany of faults. When the Nazis dominated Europe, they burnt synagogues to the ground. Right. Muslim countries that are often criticized for their overt policies have places of varied worship. Afghanistan, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, and even Iran have synagogues. Islam did not commit the atrocities on September 11. It was a radical step, tyrannical and absolutist in their means, much like those who battled the Crusades and the Holocaust that wounded our country on 9 11. Society can only benefit from a greater understanding of the spectrum of culture and religion that made our city and world great. Allow the radical step, tyrannical and absolutist in their means. that we don't, we need to quiet down over there. Let me just say that if you interrupt the speaker, I have to give them another minute. It, we are he adhering to Robert's rules of order. You were not interrupted when you speak, so please do not interrupt the speakers. Okay, our next speaker is Paul Newell, followed by Stuart Kaufman. And let me just say a thank you to Paul, who has been extremely involved, along with Yetta, in leading the fight. I have always thrived as a community as a community of tolerance, and that as much as people care deeply about this issue in America, we do not tell our neighbors where they may and may not pray, and I encourage this board to stay firm in the commitment to tolerance. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Stuart Kaufman, followed by Stuart Kaufman. I'm Stuart Kaufman of the Alliance for Interfaith Resistance. Um, I listened to Senator Squadron say that he was reminding folks of what we suffered down here and it is important. The fact is that the community board needs to remember what happened down here. Who introduced himself as a resource, and who was in fact one of the owners of the property, was before when that Mrs. Boland was talking about her son, was laughing with his lawyer, which I think is metaphoric for the entire way that Islam approaches the West. A couple of weeks ago, one of the mayor's assistants wired the senator, uh, uh, Governor Palin, and said that she should mind her own business. Well, I will tell you that this is not just a local issue. This is not a New York issue. It was America that was attacked on it. Jackson said, the Constitution is not a suicide pact. Yes. 
My name is Luis de Mechatura. I was a member of the New York Board of Trade on 9-11. I was late that morning. And when the first plane hit, I was just putting on my shoes. I lived five minutes away across the Hudson River in Jersey City. I opened the blinds and saw the flames shooting out. And then I watched as a second plane plowed into the South Tower. In that South Tower, four of my fellow members and a couple of my friends were having a breakfast meeting at Merrill Lynch up on the top floor. Another buddy of mine, a tennis player that I played with, Dave Bauer, formerly with the New York Giants, bond trader with Tanner Fitzgerald, was in his office. They all died on that day. Now, if, as these politicians say, this is an outreach, I would welcome an outreach from the Arab community. Let them allow a synagogue to be built in Riyadh. Yes. Let them allow a Catholic church and a Christian church to be allowed to be built in Medina. They will not allow that. This is an affront to every American, a blasphemy and a disgrace. My name is Brett Jockey. I'm an attorney here on behalf of the American Center for Law and Justice. And we represent Tim Brown, who is a firefighter and first responder who lost nearly 100 friends on September 11th and witnessed firsthand the horrors of that day. First, let me say, first off, this has nothing to do with religious freedom. This is about land use and proper procedure. There are approximately 22,000 buildings landmarked in New York City, of which over 1,000 are landmarked solely on the basis of historical importance alone, including a building that was bombed by the terrorist group Weather Underground. So for the Landmarks Com uh, Commission or this board to suddenly be concerned about the unfettered property rights of property owners reeks of an abuse of discretion. Second. It is hard to imagine that this property would not be a landmark but for its proposed use as a mosque. And for you guys to take that into consideration or the Landmarks Commission is also improper. And if it's not landmark, we intend to challenge that decision as we believe that improper political considerations have come into play here, including your inappropriately timed decision earlier this summer to endorse the proposed use, the, the proposed mosque prior to a vote on the Landmarks issue. Now let me wrap up by saying this. Tolerance, ladies and gentlemen, is nothing Sorry, more out of time. Let me just finish this no, sentence. Tolerance is nothing more than a buzzword that can be used to justify any behavior, yes. good or bad. And today I'm proud to stand yes. with New Yorkers and Americans. Sir, you're out of time. Yeah. We will not be duped yeah. into remaining so silent by the false promise of tolerance at all costs. Hi, Nanette Raymond Rivera. Tolerance is a crime when applied to evil. Islam is not a religion. It is an ideology made up of banking, finance, medicine, and jihad. Jewish. I grew up 
My family is Jewish. Um, I'm not very religious. I spend a lot of time at the 92nd Street Y, which is a fantastic place that feels like it's really representing the Jewish cultural tradition without necessarily, you know, uh, while also welcoming people who are from other religions as well as people who are Jewish and not, you know, can find a home there. I think it was very appealing to me to hear a center that was being modeled on that in some way. Um, and I think it's important to remember that there were Muslims living in, in the lower Manhattan community before September 11th and working here. There were Muslims who were killed on September 11th. Okay, I'm going to ask you to grab died with, who were working very strongly with me in the rebuilding. And I just think it's very important to figure out how to build us together. Thank you. John Castellano, followed by Chiara Rose. Hello, everybody. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Castellano. I'm a longtime resident of New York City. I live in Chinatown. I did spend nine months down at Ground Zero in the recovery effort, so I think I've seen a little bit of a little bit of what's going on. And what I don't understand about the Muslim community right now, if they're coming to us and telling us we need some tolerance of them, why couldn't they have come to Community Board One and said to Community Board One, listen, we're planning on putting a mosque in this area. If you think it's a sensitive issue, maybe we should have a couple of hearings, see how the community feels about it, and maybe move it out of a perimeter of or an acceptable area away from ground zero. Now, I don't see this. I also don't understand how when we're looking at a, at a group of people, the Muslim religion, and their war cry, their war cry frightens me. If you ever listen to the, the tapes of Flight 93, one of the last things you hear is Allah Akbar, as our people are dying in that plane, as our people died in the World Trade Center. This was their war cry. I don't understand. Now, we're not saying don't build it, right. but move it away from us. Give us some okay, little sir. room to breathe. Right. Our Is next that speaker. I guess that's it. I just like to move to the room. I realize the pain that this is. Our next speaker is Chia Rose. Let's not forget the award. Chia Rose, followed by Larry Hi there. Uh, supporters of the Cordoba Initiative would say this is a great way to strengthen Muslim and West relations by showing acceptance to and tolerance for Muslim American people. They may also say people in opposition are racist, bigots, religiously intolerant, or trampling on the First Amendment. Amendment. I would say to them the First Amendment is not only there to give us rights to freedom of religion, but to freedom of speech and petition. We the people disapprove of the 13-story mosque overlooking the crater that is ground zero. Our disapprovement has nothing to do with religion and everything to do with respect. Yes. It is insulting to us as Americans, and anyone who has read the Quran knows that. To supporters who say non-supporters are Islamophobes or intolerant of Islam personally, how do you expect me to be tolerant when I watch my female counterparts walking around in 100 degree weather in burqas, or in the crazy people who believed in your peace-loving God try to destroy the Twin Towers twice? When did we become so politically correct that we can't see what's right in front of us?
Good evening, everyone. How are you today? Okay. I represent uh, No to the Mosque at Grand Zero on Facebook, and I just wanted to say I heard everybody's opinion. I loved it. But what, what would the dead people say? The innocent people that died in the World Trade Center, the police officers, the firefighters that died. Wouldn't they say we are tired of hearing Allah Akbar? Even from two blocks away? Jesus, for their, they were oppressed by Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah. We need to show them their support. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Susan Cohn, and I'm a uh, candidate for Congress uh, here in the 8th District, the district in which uh, the proposed uh, mosque will be situated. Uh, however, I'm speaking to you this evening uh, as a fellow New Yorker, a fellow American, and a fellow human being. On September 11, 2001, our nation suffered the worst attack on our homeland in our history. Our enemies, Muslim extremists, engaged in the barbaric act of flying commercial airliners into the Twin Towers, intentionally causing the horrific deaths of nearly 3,000 innocent men, women, and children of all faiths and denominations. Simultaneous attempts were made to perpetrate similar acts of terror in our nation's capital. There's not a person in this district, in this city, in this, or in this country that was not forever impacted by this atrocious act of cowardice. We cannot bring the victims back. We cannot alleviate the great anguish of those that survived them. Okay, ma'am, your time what is up. What we can and must do is respect the your feelings up. of the families of the victims who okay. are speaking out against this proposal. Your time is up. Our, your emotional pleas. Our last speaker is Stella Martinez. he is a man of peace that what he would like to do is maybe bring some kind of unity into us so we appeal to him to the board to our mayor to everyone that says it's okay for this must you have said you have known the pain that is causing to build this mosque. You have seen the division that is causing in our city. The best thing to do that the Iman can do as a man of peace, as an intelligent man that he is supposed to be, is to say, no, we understand the pain that is causing the people that lost many friends, yeah. many family members. Yeah.
is trying to save the facade of the Colgate building. Look at it, I walk past it every day of my life, and I, the Rock Rose haven't done a great job there. We're trying to do something better than that, so we don't want it in some museum, we want it actually where it you know, to argue in favor of the same landmark, although I would defer to you guys on this, but what I, my, the main basis of my question is, once you, if you say it's not going to be landmark, then what authority do you have left to ask anything of them in terms of saving any part of the structure? Is what we put in the resolution, we'd like, the, we'd like LPC to support our position of having the facade but kept on site. But once LPC votes against landmark, isn't their authority effectively Completely. We, we can say tonight we want a landmark to LPC whenever it says can, can not take our advice, as you know. But what do you want LPC to say? Uh, what we've said here is that we don't believe it means individual landmark status. It is a building, it, is a, it would be a contributing building in a historic district, but it's not in a historic district. But we would like LPC to consider uh, keeping the facade uh, on site. Under what authority? Under what authority if they're not landmark? We have a clear authority. We know, you know what the process is. LPC with staff can say to the owner, we would like you to do this, and the owner can typically listen. In my opinion. Okay. All right, I mean, I, I, Michael. Well, there, there's an example of precedent a lot of cast iron in the thought were, were preserved uh, when the area was cleared with the world of business. Chef yeah. Silverman. Cyphos? No. Skidmore? Yes. Skinner? Yes. Sung? Yes. Tannenbaum? No. Townley? Vigiano? No. Williams? No. Winbush? Okay. Julie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, it's, I, I can't see past the second row, okay. so I really okay. apologize. Yes. It's all right. Yes. Um, okay, well, let's move on while I'm telling the vote. The second um, resolution is fairly straightforward, 40 Dover. We didn't have the samples, so we will amend the last whereas to say that stucco uh, will be finished in color, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, the stucco will have a correct finish and color, um, so we can amend that, and in which case we would approve um, that uh, application. And the last one I suggest we take both of them together is 406 Broadway. And as you can see, uh, we didn't really feel we had enough information there, so it was a partial approval, which um, is suggesting that if there is danger on the rear wall, the LPC consider that application uh, part as a separate application, and that they come back to us with a more substantive um, issue. I want to state quickly, Roger, that Corey Sharpless was kind enough to write this resolution. And Corey Sharpless. Obviously, from the bottom paragraph, the not Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I can take both of those together yes. with the amendments to 40 Dover. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Everyone, have you read the two resos? Of the Characterization. And if you read any progressive uh, uh, person who has written on this, you will find that the mischaracterization quote is a mischaracterization. <laughs> this requires, this bill requires police officers who perceive that a crime may be committed and being an illegal immigrant is itself a crime, these people must be carded. Does that sound a little bit like apartheid or, or civil rights or, or the South prior to Okay, that? okay. In the, interest, in the interest of time, I mean, this, these issues, I feel people have enough information on. I appreciate what Jeff is saying, but I, I really disagree, and I think that this board should take a position on both of these. Are we going to continue with questions? Uh, Anthony? Uh, I looked at this very purely the scope of the community board, land use, budget, service delivery issues. If the borough board wants us to take a position on it, I feel it's beyond our scope. I would urge people, as I'm going to do, because we're constantly going outside of the city charter all the time. If we are limited just to what the city charter says, we wouldn't do 90% of the successes that this board has had. And so I, I, I also have to say, disagree with that. Sorry, Jen, I also have to say that I had the same issues. My first questions were your questions. Liz brought it up also. And at the end of our discussion, my personal feeling is that I was taking a moral stand by voting in favor of this. Thank you. So. Michael? I, I agree with that completely. I agree, Julie, that we should vote on this. 
So, just as the moral point, we can't we can't make any amendments, right? It's so, my understanding so, so, that no, we this cannot this make amendments. Because if you read the law, I read the law as well. Uh, according to Arizona law, you have to be in stop for a crime first before they can ask for your uh, for your uh, uh, status. Now, the federal law says the power of the, the officer has just needs the power of observation and situational awareness. Situational awareness. That's it. So why are we condemning Arizona's law and not the federal law, which has a lower standard to ask? So Mark, we're going to vote this up or down. You can abstain. You can vote yes, no. That that's the beauty of the community board. Okay, I know there are a lot of hands. There's been a call to question. We're going to vote on it. So we're all in favor. I'm sorry, Julie. We're voting on it with that addition, I suggest, or something. Yeah, we can exactly. I'm happy to take that back. I can't imagine that, that that's not a substantive change. I can't imagine that that would be difficult to get. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to vote on the first one, which is number four, the New York State Marriage Equality Bill. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, any all those opposed? One, one. Uh, any abstentions? One, two, three, four. Recusal. Uh, uh, okay, and then we're going to take the second one, which is on uh, Arizona's new immigration law. Okay, on Arizona's new immigration law. All in favor?